Alright guys, it is time for another Commander's Chat. Today we'll be talking about PR missions. Now this one is more directed to people that are consistently working on it. The people that don't care about it, this doesn't affect you. But the people that are consistently going at this, you will see the struggles and why this is a problem. At least how I see it. One of the biggest problems with this is that with new PR seasons added yearly into the game, Without a catch-up mechanic, players that are new, or even casuals or the average player, will slowly fall behind in developer levels. What I mean by this is, you're not really done with the season unless all, your sh all those ships are developer 30. That's just how I see it. Some people might be like, well, I just want to get the ones I like to developer 30. You know, stuff like that. Well, if you want to play that way, sure. But just because you want to play that way specifically doesn't mean that it should be impossible. Because as of right now, with the pace that we're going right now, unless you're consistently going at the game, it's almost impossible to get all developer 30s in time before the next season comes out. At least for the average player. Even like hardcore as of right now, depending on when PR3 gets released, it's going to be hard. And it's probably going to put you a little bit behind, depending on the direction they go with. So on average, a fast player takes about 3-4 to four months to get SSR developer 30s doing cubes and coin missions. For developer 30 URs, probably 7 months. I say 7 months is probably when people are going to start ticking developer 30s on ships like Azuma and FDG about that pace. The average player for SSR developer 30s is about 5 months and I'm talking about most if not all developer 30s so about five to six months roughly around there and for you are developer 30s it's gonna be at least nine months i don't see you guys get, getting it done less than that unless you're consistently going at it then that means you're not the average player you're one of the faster players out there so because it takes so long to get developer 30s if you're a new player there's almost no chance you're going to catch up. I'm sorry. There's almost no way. Unless you consistently spam cube missions for almost a year. Maybe two years. But not everyone's able to sustain that long term. It costs a lot of money. And you got to open up those wallets if you want to do that. Which I don't think is fair for new players because it's not their fault they start late. Well, it could be. But I don't see it that way. They shouldn't be punished because they started late. So... If they want to have all developer 30s, well shit, what can they do about it, right? It sucks. Even right now, PR2 is going very, very fast. Unless, because they're, they're doing this, we want to catch up mechanic, right? Well, PR3 is already announced this month that it's in the works. It's going to be in the second quarter of 2020. Right now, we're technically in the second quarter of 2020. So at the very latest, it's going to be June 2020. For Japanese and Chinese players. Now, is the EN server going to sync it up? Are we gonna get the are we gonna get PR3 on June at the very latest? That's gonna suck. PR2 just came out like four months ago. And most of us aren't even close to being done yet. Not even the whales are close to being done yet. So I assume this is gonna be released in August, but then we're not gonna be synced up, and even then. It's 8 months since PR2 came out. Guess what? Developer 30 for UR ships takes at least 7 months. If you're consistently going at it. Now, the pace I'm going at, I'm probably going to finish sometime in August. That's what I'm expecting. I play this game a lot as well. Do you think the average player plays the game as much as I do that can sustain coins and Q missions long term? They can't. So, if you aren't that kind of player... You're eventually going to fall behind because by the time, let's say you're developer 25, 26, 27 for PR2 ships. If PR3 drops in August, guess what? Now you have to decide, damn, do I want to work on PR3 now or PR2? Okay, let's finish up PR2. There's going to be another two, one or two months before I finish up all these ships. Might as well just go ahead and finish them. Okay, so you do that. A uh, month, uh, month or two later, you're all done with all developer 30 ships for PR2. It is now October. You're now two months late on your PR3 grind. And then let's say 10 months later, PR4 comes out. 
and now you're scrambling to try to finish up PR3. See the cycle where I'm going at? There has to be some kind of catch up mechanic, otherwise you're just going to slowly fall behind and high and behind. Now that's for the current player. If you're a new player, oh man, you're going to have a very very bad time. Because now you have to decide, okay, well, PR2, PR1, PR3 is coming out in a couple months, what do I do? You see what I'm getting at? There has to be some kind of catch-up mechanic. Otherwise, it's going to get very, very bad. Now, as for the uh, five mission cards, this is also a problem as well. See, with two seasons of PR missions, the pool is already diluted. Back then, PR1 had all five cards as season one cards which gives us a lot of options to pick. But with Season 2 being out, only 2 is guaranteed for the ones that we want to focus on. The other 3 cards are RNG, PR1 or PR2. Now, if they keep the same formula going for PR3, okay, so let's pick PR3 now. Alright, that's fine. But, the next 3 cards are going to be even more diluted. It's going to be PR1, PR2, or PR3. You see what I'm getting at? So the fixed 2, nothing changed there, but the random 3 afterwards, the pool gets smaller. Because think about it, Season 1, those 3 random cards are all the same, Season 1. The next season, Season 2, it can be, is a 50% chance it's going to be PR1, it's going to be a 50% chance it's going to be a PR2 for those random 3 cards. Now, PR3, you got your 2 fixed PR3 cards. Now, it's a 1 in 3 chance for each card to be either PR1, PR2, PR3. The chance of you getting a good selection of cards becomes smaller and smaller each season it comes out. Unless there's some better way to filter this, I just don't see that it's going to be good in the long term. It's going to be very, very diluted. It's going to be even slower to get PR, PR missions done because UR ships takes a long time. If you don't get good cards, it's going to be worse. And while I'm on this topic, I see no point in trying to nerf the cards. I know PR2 missions got nerfed heavily with the free ones and the coin ones, at least the cheap coin ones. It got nerfed. Not to mention that the, U, the, the UR print face missions, it can give one. Why is it giving one? Because I'm pretty sure that PR1 missions back then, the face missions, the, if you take a gold monarch one, the 8 hour one, you're guaranteed at least two. Probably more than that, but I'm pretty sure at least two. Guess what? For the rainbow 30 minute missions, the eight hour monarch, uh, eight hour FDG Azuma missions as well, you can get one from those. Why, we're spending so much resources, but we can still get one from that. Why, is, why are they nerfing these cards? I don't understand. It's already taking so long to get UR prints for those two cards. Way longer than season 1, and yet they still try to nerf those cards. They nerf the missions, why? Why do you guys want us, why do you want us to take longer? If you keep releasing seasons every single year, we're gonna fall behind. These missions are awful. They get worse every year. Like PR1 was okay because the missions weren't terrible and there was only one season. But this season, PR2, okay, you nerf the missions and you make it harder for us to finish up the season 2 because of 2 UR ships. So why'd you nerf the missions? I'm trying to understand why. What's the thought process here? And don't get me started with the UR gun. This one is extremely bullshit. There's only one way to obtain it and that's through missions. The rates are abysmal, way worse than UR developer prints by a long shot. This one is horrible, 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 horrible. You literally have to spam G missions. If you want to like be okay G and D missions because G and D missions they give developer prints and they give a chance for the, the gun print if you spam cubes you're not going to get the print and if you spam E and Q guess what you're not getting developer prints so you got to pick G and D you got to spam the crap out of those but guess what the rates are bad oh they're very very bad if you compare like everyone in the game, the prints are all over the place. Even with game time being a factor, and then like how many missions they spammed over the course of four months already. There's people ranging from like 10, 20, 30, even P3 
people, there's someone that's done already. They finished today. Like, it's all over the place. There's no consistent way to farm this print. It's so RNG-gated. It's so time-gated. Such a powerful, powerful gear is locked behind RNG and time. Two of the worst things ever to come into any type of video game. RNG and time. Because RNG makes it so, oh, I want more attempts because I didn't get it the first time around. But guess what? Time gate. It stops you there. You have to wait until this mission finishes up before you can grab another one. You can't farm this gun. It's literally click this, wait a couple hours, and come back. Even a login warrior, a casual player that plays less than an hour a day, could have more prints than someone who plays every single day and is on top of their missions because their RNG is that bad. There's no backup. There's no other way to farm this gun. It's annoying. Such a powerful, powerful gun locked behind a stupid, stupid RNG wall. Ridiculous. There's no other way to farm this gun except through RNG. So what are the solutions here? Well, let's, let's start these topics one at a time. The first one is add more ways to get old PR prints. As of right now, we have the exchange shop, we have events giving universal prints, and we have the missions going on right now. I'm pretty sure those are the only ones. That's fine. They'll, they'll, they added a new way, the exchange shop, or the exchange metal. That's fine. But now we need more. If you're going to add a season 3, there has to be more ways to get prints. So, coin shop, the one that Shiranui always camps, because I'm pretty sure most people nowadays don't even look at that shop. There's nothing in there. Because coins are such a liability in this game. You need so much of it. People don't even bother with buying from anything in that shop. So, throw something in there worthwhile to look at. Daily, weekly, missions, rewards. Now, this is not that hard. Make it so, like, I don't know, maybe a daily you get one or two universal prints. I don't think that's a, I don't think that's pro a problem, right? A daily reward of one or two universal prints? That's not bad. That's pretty good. So, in about a year's time, you get, to, you get, like, 365 or 730 in a year. That's, like, two ships at developer 30 right there. SSRs. Very easy. Now this is for SSRs, not universe, not the UR ones. That's fine. Just add more ways to get prints. So people that start, are new, they don't have that. Um, they don't have that overwhelming feeling of oh, I'm never going to catch up on PR missions or PR levels, right? So that's also a way to do it. <laughs> Otherwise, you're gonna have a bad time getting developer thirties if you wish to try to catch up on that. The second one is. The PR mission, the, 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 five, the five cards, add a better filter for those missions. When PR missions arrive, how will they solve the five mission tab? Two guaranteed, but then the three ones are random, right? So there has to be a better way to filter out these missions. A, a lot better way. Now, what I suggest is change the two into a three. So now we have three guaranteed cards for that specific season. Two is not enough. It's it's not enough. I'm I'm just gonna say it. The way that you are prints take to get in this game, because it's abysmal, there has to be at least three. Because let's be honest here, there's some missions out there, no one does them. Like the B missions, most people don't do them. The C missions nowadays, some people don't even touch. Unless you just don't want to spend money. There needs to better needs to be a better filter. So people are less likely to get screwed over, they get what they want etc etc also i say like more refreshes as well maybe maybe two refreshes a day because one is not enough especially with how diluted the pool is with just two seasons alone imagine a third season it's gonna get bad and for this one the ur print oh man the ur gun print that is oh man this one's annoying so if developer prints are annoying enough oh this one is gonna be really really annoying this one's extremely, extremely annoying. So, assuming PR3 gear prints don't even have the gun in it, I'm just going to assume it doesn't, it might, um, you're stuck. So let's say you're done with developer, you say, you say you're done with PR2, right? You're one of those players that are all developer 30, done with all P PR2 chips. Now, you have to decide, do you want to do PR3 mission cards, which most people will do because a new season comes out, or do you want to go back to PR2 and do 
gear prints. You want more of those gun prints. You have to decide. So let's say, let's say you go for, uh, let's say you do PR3. Okay, fine. You go for PR3. Now you fall behind on the gun print. Yes, the gun is optional. You don't need it to beat the game, but it's a powerful, powerful gun. So why are they gonna gate? Why are they gonna gate keep that gun behind something so stupid as to you have to decide between PR missions or going for this gun print RNG by the way to get this print? It's so stupid. But let's say you go for the gear print. All right, um, let's go for that. So now you fall behind on PR three missions. And when PR4 comes out, guess what? You're going to be ca caught up on working on PR3 to even start on PR4. PR4, that sucks. So a good example is like, let's say, let's say as of right now, you're roughly developer 28 or something, right? Actually, no, I already said this example. <laughs> you guys you heard me enough about it. So the solution here. Is to add more incentives to get this gun. Same as the uh, first one where I said add more ways to get SSR prints or whatever, or just uh, developer prints in general. Add more ways to get this gun. Right now, it's just locked behind RNG. Add more incentive. One of the big ones I suggested was in, in events, most people don't go past 50, 60K because that's where the, um, PR prints stop, right? It's one of the biggest resources in this game. It shows you how much people value these kind of material. But guess what? Once you're past that, there's no point going any higher. 80k is like another duplicate elite ship. 100k is a rainbow box. What's the point in trying to go for those? So let's say you change the 100k milestone to two or three of the UR main gun prints. That sounds pretty good. It's, a, it's probably double the work, but you're guaranteed at least two or three at the end of it. I say that's worth it. Especially coming from someone who's been very, very unlucky with getting prints. I say it's worth it. I'd probably I do it. I know a lot of people that probably would do it too. I say it's worth it. Because let's be honest here. No one thinks the rainbow box is worth it. But two or three UR prints are definitely, definitely worth it. Anyways, that is my uh little chat rant, whatever you want to call it, for this topic. Let me know what you guys think. This is a topic that it's going to get annoying depending on what they do at PR3, I will say. Depending on what the devs, Manju, Yongshi, decide to do for PR3, it could be good, it could be bad. Now, I'm hoping they know that the issue that um, PR missions and develop prints are very, very lackluster in this game and you don't get a lot of it. I hope they figure this out because the reason why they, want to br they brought up PR3 is because they're... I read somewhere that... They said they released, They want to release PR3 because most people in the game has PR2 ships already. Or at least most of them. Okay. Well, sorry Manju. Sorry Yongxi or whoever. There's more to PR ships than just getting them. You have to get them to developer 30 as well. That's also a thing. Now, just because you release them and you give us the option of, oh, you don't have to get all developer 30 ships, doesn't mean some people don't want to get them. It should still be possible. Even if it is grindy, it should still be possible that some players out there can still get all developer 30s. But I don't like this design of we want to make it as almost impossible to get without some kind of like large, large commitment. And even then it's probably impossible. Same with like limited ships that I talked about a while back. If you start now, you're going to miss out a lot of ships. At least they're doing war archives for that though, right? So stuff like that. Anyways, let me know what you guys think. The topic here is PR missions. Stuff that some people don't care about, but I personally care about this a lot. So, yeah. Anyways, I'll see you guys in the next video. Let me know what you guys think.